Let's kick off this review by talking about the design upgrades over. Let's kick off this review by talking about the design upgrades over the normal RS7, and there's no better place to start than these exhaust pipes, which are the largest fitted to any RS. Of course, being an RS, they are oval. But if I look in there, there are two actual exhaust pipes. There's the rear bumper design, completely new for the RS, more aggressive. Look at these wheel arches. They're so pronounced. It's so aggressive looking. Also, 21-inch alloys are standard. They can upgrade to 22s, which I believe these are. I mean, the bits that are carried over from the normal A7 are the bonnet, roof, boot lid, and doors. The rest of it, all new. And at the front, you've got a new RS bumper, and it is pretty blooming aggressive. Big vents. Big scoops, look at the bottom, the splitter. You've got a black honeycomb grill as well. There's none of that kind of metallic effect on there like the normal A7, you've got this. Also, the RS7 gets the upgraded matrix LED headlamps, so you don't dazzle other drivers, and they do a cool little dance when you turn the car off and on. The overall theme of this car is that it just looks pretty. The RS's wheels are pushed 20 millimeters outwards on each side over the A7, and that means its track is 40 millimeters wider, which improves handling. The car gets special RS Sports Air suspension as standard. It sits 20 millimeters lower to the ground than the standard A7's air suspension, which is optional, by the way. And when you go over 74 miles an hour, it drops a further 10 millimeters lower for less drag. Now you might be able to see that the car's engine is actually slightly in front of the front axle, which isn't ideal for handling because it can promote understeer. Apart from when your annoying mate with the BMW N car points it out to you, it's a four litre twin turbo V8, 600 horsepower, 800 newton meters of torque, and it also has 48 volt mild hybrid technology. So when you lift off the throttle, it can actually just cut off the engine and cruise to save fuel. Or if you're just pooping along the motorway, it will run on four cylinders instead of eight. Now it drives all four wheels through an eight speed torque converter automatic gearbox, which has been tuned for sportiness. That can send up to 85% of the power to the rear wheels. And you've also got a sport quattro rear differential to move the power around between the rear wheels for optimum cornering. Let's say you paid extra for the upgraded sports exhaust. You're going to want other people to be able to appreciate how good this car can sound. So you're going to rev it at traffic lights only. When you try to do that, it's not as good as you expect because listen. For safety reasons, there is a soft limiter. It stops you having that kind of fun. Just how quick this car is. So. I'm going to measure it and I can do that using their onboard trip computer. So I can do acceleration measurement and then we're good to go. 0 to 100 kilometers, 0 to 62 miles an hour. But I'm not going to trust Audi's equipment for reasons. I'm going to put the car into RS2 mode where I have everything in maximum attack, all super simple. Then all I have to do. Oh, that's brutal. And that is it. So the lap timer says 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, 0 to 62 in 3.5 seconds. But does the RS also deliver when you're not going in a straight line? Let's find out. Here comes a twisty road, right the gearbox in the manual, see what this thing is like. Yeah, strong engine. It's quite brutal, the gear change when you're doing it manual and you've got the car in full attack mode. Steering sharp, accurate if a little bit lifeless, but my God, this thing.
upgrades. Most notable are these RS Sport seats, so integrated headrests. So you've got Falcona leather, which is nice and soft. You've got red stitching on them with a the honeycomb pattern. They're ventilated as well as heated, and obviously they're electrical as well. You have an RS Sport steering wheel. That's nice as well. And then there's red stitching here and about the place as well, like on the gear selector. You've got bespoke RS Sports displays with stuff like G meter and you can actually change it to an RS Performance, which has a slightly different look to it. The heads-up display also has bespoke RS dials as well. And when you see a graphic of the car on the infotainment screens, it's the RS model, not the normal A7. For the first time ever, you get two configurable RS modes, so you can set up things like the suspension, the steering, and all that kind of stuff into these different settings. And then you can flip between them very quickly by a special RS mode button on the steering wheel. In the back seats, it's pretty much A7 business as usual, which means decent amount of knee room, but headroom is a bit with the awesome RS upgrades. Yet again, you've got RS sport seats, and for the first time ever on an RS7, you can have a three-seater bench rather than just two individual chairs. Mm, added practicality. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. Cause you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away, as you fade away There is quite literally nothing RC about this car's boot. It's exactly the same as a normal A7, so slightly bigger than a Porsche Panamera turbos and an AMG GT4 doors, and it's filled with all that crap. So I want a piece of de-restrict autobahn. I'm cruising along at 120 kilometers an hour. You know, it's about 70 miles an hour and I'm averaging 9.4 liters, oh, 9.3 liters per 100 kilometers. So I'm cruising along at about 160 kilometers an hour and I'm doing 15.3 liters per 100 kilometers. So what's that? 18. 18 miles per gallon. Let's push on. Okay, so now we're cruising at about 230 kilometers an hour, which is about 140 mile an hour, and we're doing 20 litres per 100 kilometers. 14 miles per gallon. I will take that to halve my journey time any day. So I'm driving over some paving, which would normally be quite bumpy, and I'm riding on 22 inch alloy wheels, but this air suspension in comfort mode is doing a marvellous job it's just like I'm painting around in a normal A7, the steering's light, everything's just easy. It's quiet in here as well. Lovely. But you know, this is quite a, a long car, isn't it? So what happens if you want to make a U-turn? Well, it's because this car comes as standard with rear wheel steering. So when you're going slowly, it turns the back wheels in the opposite direction to the front wheels to make you do tight turns. So when you're going faster, the back wheels go in the same direction as the fronts for added stability. Oh, it just makes this car easier to live with yet again. And that sports exhaust in comfort mode is suitably muted. You won't annoy your neighbors. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Audi RS7? Well, I like it, it looks better, and being in a state, it is more practical. So, I would have one of those instead. So, comment below, Audi, give Matt an RS6, and together, we'll get one on the channel.